Okay, in today's video I'm just going to show you quickly how I saved a hard drive from uh, basically being useless because um, it kept on disconnecting from my computer and I suspected it was the uh, I thought it might have been the connector. I tried a different connector and I'm still doing it. So it was actually the connector on the hard drive, on the actual uh, portable hard drive. So this is it. I've actually pulled this apart. It had the um, Seagate drive in there. And I pulled it all apart because uh, I've got this neat little solution when you have this sort of problem. Uh, I had a hard drive fail a few years ago. And uh, I pulled it apart and actually kept the, the caddy bit, you see. That's where the hard drive went in. And you see here it's got the uh, power and the USB 3 port there. So it come, this has saved me many times, this thing. It's so handy. So if a hard drive ever fails, always keep the caddy bit. And I'll show you why. So basically, the connector was, it just was loose. So the, the actual connector in the... Uh, on the hard drive uh, interface board here, uh, started getting loose, kept disconnecting, which is not a good thing if you're copying files or moving files, you don't want these things disconnecting. I, I format in XFAT and uh, yeah, it hasn't got the, um, the protection for uh, uh, if the power goes off. So yeah, uh, it's not and it's not good to keep firing, firing up drives all the time. So you want to keep them going. Right, so what I did was you know, I had the cover on like so, and I just got my trusty Stanley knife. This is a this is a cool little one I got from uh, when I was working at uh, Bunnings as a rep, and they gave us all one of these because of their safety. They sort of flick back uh, for opening boxes, so you don't cut yourself. Ock health and safety issue, I guess. So you know, you, I'd go around, go around there and there and there, go right around the whole thing, and you pop it off, pop the lid off. And inside, it's got a few little rubber grommets. Uh, so you pull the pull the caddy out, and the drive was in here. Let's see, we'll just put him back in. And it had uh, had four screws: one, two, three, four, and little rubber bits. I put them in a the bag now. Little rubber bits, vibration protection, that sort of thing. So get to this stage, take your drive out. This caddy might be useless, but I'll keep it just in case uh, I can fix it. And uh, just put him in the new caddy. So, there we go, drive, caddy. Just slide him in. You should clip in. And you've got yourself a little caddy. And then uh, I've tested this out already. I can't show you because I've actually used all the USB ports. Um, had to uh, disconnect this to actually run the cam link uh, for the camera. So yeah, you've got the power there, USB 3, start it up, and Bob's your uncle, it works, absolutely works. So um, now if you've got a drive that might be you know, having trouble starting up, it's worth, it's worth doing this. The only thing is, um, you've got to get hold of one of these little caddies. You can probably get, you can probably get like a, you know, external caddy on its own. Um, but this this works fine as well. The one where I just uh, got it from an old old hard drive that actually did fail because I took it out, tried it in a different caddy and everything, and that one actually totally failed. You just used to go, tick, 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 never used to load up. So that's a little project. I've lost uh, the data off of that. That's why I am trying to put everything into uh, Synology NASes with you know. Uh, redundancy protection and that sort of thing so I don't lose any data um, ideally you want backups but once you start getting lots of data it's, it's uh, starts getting expensive to back up so this is gonna this will do for now um, so I'll probably migrate all my desktop hard drives all these external hard drives into a NAS I know they're not NAS rated but uh, it's better than uh, at the moment because if one of them fails I've, I've lost the data so uh, it's better to have them in a NAS than not have them in a NAS and have them in a RAID configuration with uh, uh, probably one disk redundancy or use you run SHR1 which is Synology, Synology Hybrid RAID 1 which is one disk redundancy. Um, that seems to be working alright. I had one disk fail in a NAS a few months ago. No data loss. Took the drive out. I remembered where the bay was. Put it back in the bay. Bam. And actually, it blinks which bays 
failed anyway. Put it back in the bar, rebuilt rebuilt the uh, the raid volume, and it didn't miss a heartbeat. It was really good. So uh, totally recommend getting a NAS if you want to keep your data fairly safe. And uh, oh, didn't turn my mail off, did I? <laughs> turn that off. Quit that. And uh, yeah, so that's a neat little trick. So if you've got a drive that you think uh, could be the interface board instead of the actual drive, try try this little trick. Uh, pull it apart because all the I'm pretty sure all the all the external hard drives, three and a half inch external hard drives actually come with the uh, just a desktop drive uh, in built in. I've never seen one. Probably the really really early ones were built without uh, the desktop drives. You know the actual case but these you can just take them out take them out of the case and uh, use them put them in a NAS if you want although as I said I don't recommend doing that because they're not uh, rated for 24 7 uh, usage and also vibration and heat uh, that you get in the NAS as well because they're all spinning right next to each other nested so yeah but um, I'm, I'm going to take the risk for now and um, then I'll rebuild the RAID. Uh, I think my biggest uh, hard drive, I've got like two, four terabytes, uh, about three, two terabytes, about four, one terabytes. So the good thing about the Synology, uh, Synology um, hybrid RAID is you can actually mix the capacities. And I might actually, let's get this going. Uh, I'll do, get onto the Synology, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. Synology RAID calculator it's called. And we'll get the window going up here. Uh, Safari browser, where are you? Right there. Let's get the Safari browser up. And that's a bit silly, isn't it? Why has it done that? We should have Safari here. Where are you? Where are you, Safari? Here we go. There it is. All right. Let's let's open up the Safari. Uh, the RAID calculator in Synology. This is a cool little, cool little uh, web-based uh, program that I use. And um, let's click on here. Let's move these around. So you've got all the uh, hard drive capacities up the top here, from 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte, etc., all the way up to 16. And uh, you can actually click on, click on the drives that you got. So I've got one terabyte there. And it actually calculates for you. Uh, you've got the space, uh, you've got unused space, used for protection, and available space. So when you've got one one terabyte drive with the SHR, that's SHR one. You've got basically close to one terabyte. You know, you've you've got a little bit of space that they use for uh, Synology uh, operations, that sort of thing. So. So if you add, add say a two terabyte drive, what you'll end up with is uh, the uh, one one terabyte available. Uh, one terabyte is used for protection because it's uh, redundancy, and you've got one terabyte unused. So basically, you want to aim for. So if I add another two terabytes, that's going to get rid of that unused one. So you want two of the largest drives. <clears throat> so you'll see here how it's it's just zipped off there. So basically, the two terabyte one is going to be. Uh, have redundancy protection, the largest drive, and then you've got the other two and the one as data. So it's a lot more efficient way of doing things. So then if I had a four, we're going to have an unused space again, of course, because we've got uh, a four terabyte upgrading from the two, and then you've got to add another four, because if I keep adding like smaller drives, like another two, we're still going to have the two. You're still going to have the two unavailable and two. So if you add another four, that unused space will disappear with the Synology Hybrid RAID, and uh, that's the way it goes. So, yeah, so that's probably what mine will look like. Roughly, seems to be what I've sort of got, two fours, a couple of twos, and a couple of ones. You can add another one there. So you can add um, drives smaller than the largest capacity, and also... When if a drive fails, say if a two terabyte one fails, you've actually got to put a two terabyte or larger to keep keep the RAID going. 
So, yeah, um, just something a little bit extra there at the end of this, just so you understand uh, how this how this works and the benefits of having uh, a NAS to protect your data. But yeah, so what what I'd do with my situation, I'd probably migrate some of these desktop drives to a NAS probably get an 8-bay NAS, migrate them into there, and then uh, when they've got a bit of spare money, just add add some higher capacity drives, maybe a 10 or a 12 terabyte, and get rid of some of the drives that are getting a bit old before they fail, because uh, sometimes two might fail at once, then you're in trouble. <laughs> All right, guys, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully it helped some people out. I know people have enjoyed, I did a fix on the GoPro Hero 3, you know, the old GoPro, uh, when the button press, uh, I think it was a shutter button wasn't working on mine, I managed to figure out how to fix that, and all the people enjoy that. I'll leave a link over there the GoPro Hero 3 fix if you got one of those because they're all out of warranty now you can just pull them apart and and uh, go from there and uh, doesn't void your warranty because there is no warranty left all right guys uh, don't forget to like subscribe and share and I'll see you next time cheers